what was your transition into turning this into sort of a business and selling things? The transition actually occurred. Um, I'm still uh, have a full time job actually, okay. but at the same time, I'm, this is also my side business as well. Well, I shouldn't say side business, but it is my business yeah. in, as a whole. But um, um, I'm also a full time worker again as an artist, but I work with another company um, doing digital work. Oh, me. And as far as the transition um, goes. I noticed that um, with the shows that I did back in Las Vegas, um, with the high number of face-to-face contact and popularity with certain pieces and series of my artwork, I decided to make it a solid yes, keep going, keep make this make this real. Just stop talking about it and make it real. We're all going to stumble at some point during the process, but just make it real and keep going. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a lot of things that occur, um, as you know, like right now, this this year right. um, that are going to create challenges and um, it's a little wobbly right now, but I'm still moving forward. I mean, there's, there's still little areas venues where you can um, pop it open such as digital, but the transitioning of me going into just experimental art to actually make it into a business um, that occurred after several encounters um, in Las Vegas uh, with customers buying my artwork and asking questions. And then, all of a sudden, we just sit there and we start talking about our lives, personal stuff, mm. more so them, me just listening, because they would see a painting or they would see an art piece. And they would, whether they purchased it or didn't purchase it, it just made them, it provoked them to, to share something personal with me. And I decided, you know what, there's something to this. Mm-hmm. Let's just keep going with this. Yeah. Uh, I I had that same sort of... Uh, thing occur when I did a few pop-ups and I was mainly there just kind of like, here are some, I mean, I do web comics, you know, it's, it's like you can buy a picture, that sort of thing. But I also had brought my microphone cause I'm doing the podcast and I wanted to meet people and people would come up and look mm-hmm. at it. And you're right. They, it, it would just start a conversation and they would see something and go, Oh, the reason they would stop is because they looked and they're like, what's that? And something clicked with them. And then there was an attachment just by looking at it. And even with my dumb little web comics, they, they would, you know, and more so probably with a painting and they would want to talk about it or have something to share. And you're right. And I found that fascinating. It was so interesting. Some of the things that I would hear from people. Um, and so you decided to take that and try and bring that out more like uh, so did you then transition to selling things online or was it doing more galleries and more shows and booking yourself places it was actually doing more galleries and and uh more um uh face-to-face okay. right now uh with the madison with madison i've just started not this year but i would say i want to say about between 2017 2018 trying to get out there in the public here in madison itself and the surrounding areas where I can get a reach out to them, um, doing festivals there. And this year, between this year and the middle to the end of last year, I really started plugging away and applying to uh, art festivals, not just here in Madison, but in Milwaukee, um, mm-hmm. or uh, other places that are t- not too far for us to travel to, um, and wanted to continue doing that. And as far as the online goes, I am actually working on cleaning up my shopping cart and just pushing forward and, and sending that out there. And I've been talking to my friends, and they're yeah. they're already saying, "Yeah, why haven't you done that already?" <laughs> and it's, Easy for them to the say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of work that goes behind it. I, I mean, know. I, there's you could, yeah, you have to actually be established and make sure everything's there and, and the legality behind you, your shipments and people making sure that there's no scam artists and they're actually real. Right. There's a lot of other stuff that goes between not. Not excuses, real reasons, real hard facts. Because even I thought, oh, it'd be easy. I just go in there, plop some stuff in there, set my shopping cart up. It's good. Good yeah. to go. Well, yeah, that's great. But you have to do more than that. You have to actually set up a schedule. Where are they going to pick it up if they have a pickup? Mm-hmm. And if you are going to ship it to them, make sure the price range is right in there. Um, some of the shipping costs, I, I would definitely have to eat, obviously. Um, I would like to push it over to the fi- as a final cost included with the product itself. But there, at some point you have to have a little break, a breaking point. Yeah. So, and I, I, how um, heavy are the pieces? I, you, when you mentioned shipping, I didn't even think of that. Like your pieces are larger. They've uh, you've incorporated mixed media into it. Now you're working with concrete. So shipping, <laughs> <laughs> so shipping gets heavier and heavier for you. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. So no, with the concrete, that would not be a shipping. That would do a local sell for that one. Yeah. Because it wouldn't be fair. And then you have to worry about the damages. Right. And um, would it be safe to get there? And there's customs, and it's a lot. Of, it's it's really difficult. So for that, I would do a personal um, face-to-face sell for that one or local. That's or a, as close to local as possible. That's a good point. Yeah, that, that would be heartbreaking if you shipped it and it broke. That would be so horrible. Yeah. I'm just thinking about that now, and I'm like, oh, that would be – nothing you could do about it. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah, that's, no. That upsets me even <laughs> just thinking about it hypothetically.